Okay then, pilot. So here we go, part three. Let's get this build finished now with this one. Uh, I've got the ESCs all weighed up. Right, taped them up. Right, we did the rest of this yesterday. All I've added is a capacitor. This is a big one, but one of these things. Right, if you're not sure about capacitors, right, I'll leave a link in uh, the description about them because. Uh, to make it simple, they help to cut down on what's called noise on your FPV camera. You know the bit of static you get, they help to cut them down. You don't need some of this big, obviously. Uh, you get all different sizes, right? all different sizes. They're all the same shape, but all different sizes. And you basically just solder um, onto the black and the red of your <coughs> LiPo cable. Right. Some people get the small ones and solder them onto every single one of the ESCs, but it's one of them optional things. But I put a capacitor in anyhow. Right, so uh, we're going to get on with the VTX and the GPS and the uh, antenna, and that's it. But I'll tell you what, first of all, first thing I want to do before we start joining everything up I'm just gonna test it now I, while I was going through it I uh, checked it a couple of times off shot with a multimeter just to check I had no cross wires but uh, one of the best ways I'll just zoom out here wrong way <laughs> one of the best ways is to plug in a smoke stopper right and uh, if there's a problem right this light on here will turn red so it basically if you just plug a battery in without some sort of smoke stopper you won't stop the smoke and you get a puff of smoke if you've had a problem if you've done something wrong so basically we don't want this light to turn red yeah that's great no red light got all the beeps for the ESCs flight control board flashed so now we know 100% there's uh, nothing crossed. Right then, pilots and ground crew, unplug my smoke, stop it. Uh, we're near the end. Right, these three wires, which I've already mentioned in the other video, but they're for me, uh, receiver, me, me, yeah, uh, antenna, I should say. I'm using the R9MM. Now, I've mounted it on the bottom, so it'll be there. It's not the best place to get super long range, right? But I'm not going to be going miles and miles and miles, right? So I'll get plenty of long range with it. Plus, you're completely protected from a prop strike, right? No matter which way it comes down, the props are not going to hit this, right? Because the arms are in the road. So, uh and I had uh, one of these, well I've got one of these mounted on my, one of my other quads at the bottom and it, it works fine, it works great. So I'm mounting that at the bottom. First of all then, right, let's move on to the VTX. Right, and I'm using the AKK uh, Ultimate V2. Right, one of these uh, little ones. I'll tell you what, you can't see this very well, right. So uh, let's uh, jump over to the computer for a closer look. Okay, then here's a closer look at the uh, VTX. Right, it has an MMCX connector on, which is basically, uh, a, well, you can't really say new nowadays, but a newer style, new-ish style of connecting your antennas, right, rather than the old UFL, which was like a little push down and put a blob of glue on this way you just push it in and it locks into place you'll hear it click all right you will have a button for changing channels and bands but you won't need that because we're setting it up as smart audio you've got an led which you won't need for the same reason all right the microphone i will mention i've been asked a lot of times why do vtx's have microphones well you can actually plug in an earpiece into your goggles, your FPV goggles, and uh, like listening to your MP3 players, you can actually listen to the quad. You know, like when you hear it when you're flying about and you hear it buzz over your head, you can hear the motors and everything. Now, this is a good thing, right? Uh, because, I mean, I don't do this myself, 
right I have right and uh, it distracted me however it is a good thing because as you're flying along you can actually hear your motors right or if your buzzer goes off for any reason you know what I mean you know you've got a problem you can hear it straight away in your earpiece but you can really listen to your motors right so that if there's a problem you know there's a problem and it gives you time to turn round and head back right or bring it down where it is without it actually falling out of the sky because you hear the change in the motors so yeah it's a, it's a good thing but not all pilots use it some do some don't Mr Steele swears by it I believe he won't fly anything without his earpiece in right uh, moving down then uh, yeah impulse impulse input voltage right is 7 to 26 volts now as I've showed you uh, previously I've wired that up to a 10 volt on the PDB and the ground speaks for itself the video speaks for itself now here you've got ground and 5 volt camera you don't need them Right, you're not going to be uh, wiring up your camera straight to this. It's not a good idea. It's always best to power your camera separately. Hence, in the earlier bit of the video, right, or earlier on in this uh, trilogy, depending on where this uh, bit gets linked in, right, I've wired the camera straight to the PDB, the uh, the five volts and the ground. Not always, not recommended to wire your VTX to your camera, right? Although you can do that, right? It, it it's one of them try it type things, but uh, I prefer to have a separate power voltage, right? You're less likely to get interference, right, in your image on your goggles, right? Now this smart audio plug, I get asked this a lot by new pilots, right? For starters, ignore the word smart and ignore the word audio because it's nothing to do with being smart and it's nothing to do with audio. However, right, uh, it used to be when smart audio first came out, I believe it was somebody from uh, Team Black Sheep who thought, hang on, if I wire that to a flight control board through a spare uh, UAC, I can change my video signals and stuff like that and it worked anyhow but uh, still think of it as smart audio because everybody does right you're going to take that cable now in this case I believe it was green and wire that up which I will show you if I haven't already wire that up to a spare you work but you want an RX right which is a receive because this is going to send a signal to the flight control board and the RX right on the flight control board will receive the signal and it's going to be the information right through your transmitter uh, I'll either show you how to do that or at the end of everything or I will leave a link at the end of everything how to actually uh, change your settings using your transmitter all right but briefly you hold your transmitter you do not arm your quad but you plug your quad in and you use your your stick and your to the center and to the left and then up on your pitch stick and you will come up against a menu screen and then you can go through your menu and you can change your PIDs, you can change your VTX settings, right, your power levels and everything. Right? And that's where the smart audio comes in. But you also have to make a small little adjustment uh, in beta flight, right? Which uh, I would have either already showed you or I will show you okay then so th that's your vtx there's not a lot more i can really tell you right this particular one right akk as you can see right goes up to uh 1200 milliwatts which is uh 1.2 watts and uh it's bloody powerful and it's a long range job okay then uh moving on and we're back yeah, so I've took the VTX you've just seen and I put it on that extra plate that you've already seen in my I've just uh, double sided sticky tape and a zip tie just to keep it in place. Alright. Now that smart audio cable we talked about, right? 
when you run that off run that to a spare rx channel any one you want it doesn't matter right any rx channel and that's so you can set up your smart audio which i'll show you in beta flight when we get to that bit these two nuts here that i put on here there's not much thread to them so i'm just gonna wear a little bit of extra protection just put a tiny blob of hot glue on the top of each no there you go that's all that's all it needs right i'm also going to put a little bit of this uh, m2 sticky tape m3 sticky tape i should say that's too big just on the top there actually i'll put it on that side and uh, no, i'll put it on this side it's so that when i've actually uh, soldered up the uh, fpv antenna the fpv antenna what a load of rubbish when i've actually solved soldered up the long range receiver thank you all right i can just sit it on there and it'll just sit inside tucked away all nice and neat right so uh, that's that bit done now the last bit before i solder up because putting the antenna on will be the last job because it's the uh, bottom plate all right so i'll be doing that last but before we do that uh, we need to move on to the gps right now uh, on this build because i've gone with the matic f4 flight control board and everything now you don't have to do this you can pick up any gps oh zoom out a bit there sorry you can pick up any GPS you want, right? There's plenty of cheap ones out on the market that seem to work okay. But I wanted some up that uh, was extremely reliable. The last thing I want is to take a chance, if you know what I mean. So I didn't want to take any chances. So I went for the, one of the Matex systems. Almost three times the price of your standard. You can pick the GPSs up for about eight quid. Well, these are like about 28 okay so they're a lot more expensive i suppose if you shop around you might see them a bit cheaper but they're, they're sort of like one of the best well if not the best all right and they are straightforward all right very straightforward all right you in case you lose your gst little clip there you've got your soldering pads on the back but you shouldn't lose it uh, just in case you don't know anything about GPS's, I uh, this top bit must this bit here the uh, the ceramic part faces up on your quad, right? Now, ideally you want it as far away from any antennas, any cam, anything, right? But uh, you can't do that on a little quad, right? It's impossible. It's always going to be near some sort of electricity. Right, so minimise it the best you can. Me, I'm going to put this on one of my front arms because I'm going to have my FPV antenna coming out the back and also my receiver coming out the back. So I'm going to put it on one of the front arms. But uh, before we do that, let's just take a closer look at the GPS and how to wire it up. Right, let's take a look at the wiring for the GPS, the Global Satellite Positioning System. Right, and it's simple. Right, you got your 5 volts, your ground, your RX, and your TX. Right, and that is it. That's all it is. But what is important, especially new pilots here, this is why I'm making this video. Right, the RX wire must solder onto a TX pad, and the TX wire must solder onto an RX pad. And there must be the same pad, so to speak, as in RX1 and TX1 when you're looking at your flight control board. You can use RX4, TX4 or whatever spare UX you've got, it doesn't matter. But as long as the RX goes to the TX and the TX goes to the RX. And uh, let's just take a look at this little picture I've drawn and you'll see why. Here's your GPS in your flight board. The GPS 
the TX from the GPS right, transfers the information down to the flight board on RX which receives the information that's the transmit and receive then it goes through the board again and it transmits the information back to the GPS and the GPS receives that information and it's one continuing loop of transmitting information receiving information then transmitting it back and receiving it back and it's a continuous loop right now if you have the TX going to a TX it won't work right you basically you'll know there's a problem because your GPS won't work or anything else this applies to everything you might be wiring up an FPV camera somehow that's got extra functions and it's got a TX and an RX pad right just remember the TX means transmit right the RX means receive so if you're transmitting anything to anything else Right, it needs to receive it through an RX and they need to be the same pad so to speak RX1 TX1 okay well that's just simple on the GPS because it, it's very straightforward and moving on and we're back <coughs> right as I said in an ideal world this would want to be up high somewhere but you know what I mean? It's not an ideal world, not with mini quads. Uh, I put a piece of heat shrink to protect this round, even though I will be putting a piece of tape round, and I'll be mounting it here, which is the furthest place away from the antennas, right? And also with the battery, it's the furthest place away from the battery. So it's about the best place for it. So I've put a little piece of double sided sticky tape on here at the moment. So I'll just uh, get that off. Uh, now as you've just seen, or as I said, you want uh, the RX wire going to a TX pad and the TX wire going to an RX pad for transmitting and receiving. Uh, so I'll mount them, make sure that's on tight. I will be putting a bit of tape around there, but uh, we'll just, oh bloody fiddly little bloody wire things. Right, and there's the pads that they're going to, but I want to think about how this is going to get mounted because there's this little side plate here, don't forget, that's going to go on. So I don't want it to cut the cables, so I want to make sure there's enough room for the cable. So let's just uh, loose fit this. There you go, you see I've just come across a problem here. Yeah, I'm glad I did that. <laughs> yeah, let's just take a look here. Because of the way I've mounted the VTX, that pad, that plate, is not going to fit that side plate. We're going to have to do a bit of uh, modelling or remodelling. Because this part here is just catching. So these two bits in the centre need uh, cutting out, basically. So let's just mark them. So we're looking at that one, well, the two middle ones. Yeah, two centre ones need removing. Right, let's just move that to one side and just pause on the... Uh, uh, GPS, we need to remove these two. I don't know if if I can snip them and then I doubt I'll there again this is just a thin side plate so these might snip actually like that yeah these are not my wire cutters these are some spare old ones alright I think yeah these are the knackered ones which I keep for jobs like this luckily as I said these side panels, they're more for uh, cosmetic. Look, we'll just snip them off. Great. Now we have to make it look pretty. So, uh, I'll tell you what, I can't do, I'll have to do this over the, oh, no, what? 
There you go. Need to just smooth these edges a bit. These are the little jobs you come across when you're doing all sorts of new bills. That's the thing, you, you see some bills and you don't, I'm not being funny but I get asked quite a lot to sort of like leave stuff like this in, don't edit it out, do it uncut because it's surprising you come across stuff like this in certain videos I'm not saying all videos and I'm not definitely not saying I'm the best I mean bloody hell I've seen plenty of build videos that are a hell of a lot better than what I do but uh, I've also noticed a lot of situations like this they just come across them and then all of a sudden bang they're fixed well that's what you need to do with something like this I mean you when you do yours if you get this particular quad you might mount your VTX completely different way you might use a completely different VTX you might use a board uh, with a VTX built in so you won't have to do any of this that feels alright All right, let's just uh, test that and then we can go back to the GPS again Let's see. I think that we're gonna have to unfortunately remove that top plate, which I didn't want to do. I was hoping to get round that. Well, we might, but it'd be sticking out a bit. But I was hoping I wouldn't have to do that. But uh, let's see, if I make that bit wider there and just tidy that bit up a little bit, it might go in. Yeah, let's just find out because I don't really want to cut that off because then this is going to be just dangling, so I'll have to cut that off, uh, which isn't the end of the world because, as I said, it is more cosmetic, so maybe may able to file that down a bit and then round that but I think the easiest thing to do here because these are more for like flash I, I think the easiest thing to do here is just to cut that straight off yeah just cut that straight off and not worry about it Yes, like I said, you could mount your VTX different, but I've got mine in now, so I'm not going to mess about. It's in and it's staying in. <laughs> Don't need to go too low with this, but... Uh, like I said, these are old ones, they're not that sharp, but I should... There you go. Just tidy this up a little bit. Just so I haven't got any sharp edges. I'll tell you what, it's actually easier to hold the file and there you go. Yeah, I'll still look alright. Well we'll see won't we? Let's have a look. Throw a bit more carbon fiber away. Luckily, like I said, these are more for cosmetic work. So let's see how this fits on here now then. Perfect. And you won't really notice. Look, yeah, you can see it's a bit off, but I mean, no one's going to look at your quad that high and you're not going to bother noticing. Right, the cables then. These GPS cables, how are we going to run them? If I run them under there and round, they'll solder onto the board there. But uh, basically, yeah, I know, I know. I'm going to run them under. Shouldn't cause any interference, but I'm going to run them under the uh, receiver, the receiver, the ESC cable. Right, when I'm under there, come on out, you bugger. Yeah, that'll 
help hold them in place there. Whoops. Just move these uh, antenna wires out the road. Yeah, and then I can just solder them straight onto there. But I would prefer to have them coming in that side. So after running under there, I'll tell you what, let's uh, roll these up a bit. I could loop that under that zip tie, run it that way. Yeah. How's that look? I think that'll look alright that way, won't it? Do you agree? Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> right then, uh, so what I'm going to do with you is solder up the red to the 5 volts, the black to the ground, and the RX, which is the yellow cable, the RX is the yellow cable, that will go to TX1. And the blue cable, which was TX, will go to uh, RX1. Alright, so that's all I'm going to do there. Cut them and solder them to there. So, uh, yeah. And I think it should be alright like that, look. So the cables are out the road. Let's just... Uh, don't want to cut anything until I double check. A bit like joinery. Now you see, you see them cables are going to catch this edge. So that's a bad idea. I'm glad I spotted that. Cables have to come out a bit there. And then they can run in. Ah, yeah. Glad I spotted. You see, always check, double check, and check again. That wouldn't have worked. So what I'll need to do is push these cables, let's just twist them up, make it easier to manoeuvre, but push these cables under and out through the front if I can. There's just plenty of room. There. Hold that there a minute. Get the old hemostats. There you go. Oops. Right. Now I can cut and solder on without anything catching. But just before I do that, once again, I'm going to double check again with that side panel. Yeah, that's not going to touch anything doing it that way. Perfect. Right, uh, I'll just do that little bit of soldering. Now we've troubleshooted that little awkward bit. And uh, come back to you. Jump shot. Okay then, Pilots and Ground Crew, all finished. Alright, I've uh, soldered up the GPS, which you know I just stuck down there. I haven't taped this up yet. I will be putting a piece of tape around it when I've finished. But there's some little lights on here that uh, you, you want to see blinking, shall we say, when you're setting it up. Alright. And uh, also soldered up the wires for the uh, long range receiver. As I said, I was putting that underneath. So that was just a little bit of soldering job. Put my two straps in. I used the one that came in the box, but for the centre one I wanted a big thick one, which is also another GEP RC one. But I decided to go with a big thick one for the centre and for the back I just used the thin one. And yeah, so basically, well there's no basically about it, that's it, all set up ready to go. I can't remember if I mentioned I'm using the Foxy Monster camera. Right, Foxy Monster Mini with the extension, you know, uh, I've got another one here. You know these little extension parts to make your cameras bigger. And yeah, so that's it, all ready to go. But uh, now we'll uh, plug her into Beta Flight and get her set up and uh, talk you through where uh, setting up the GPS. Also, the smart audio that we mentioned for the VTX. Alright then, uh, let's jump over to Beta Flight. 
Okay then, pilots, uh, moving on to beta flight. Uh, let's show you what you need to do to set up your GPS and get your smart audio. Also, where uh, your board is mounted upside down. Now, you will. Ha I'll tell you what, the easiest thing is just to show you. I was going to try and explain something, but it'll be easier to show you. Let's just plug in a quad. Okay, yeah, man. There you go. Right, first of all, when you first plug in your quad, this picture will be upside down because you mounted your board upside down. So the very first thing you need to do is come here where it says pitch degrees. Right, it will say zero. You want to change that zero to 180. Save and reboot. Then further down, you must turn on GPS. Right. Under that, your protocol, right? This particular GPS is U-Block protocol. That information will be on the GPS that you purchase if you get a different type, so don't panic. Save and reboot, all right? Up here, turn on your barra, barra, I can never pronounce it, turn on that middle thing, all right? You don't need your magnetometer on. Alright, because, uh, well, you won't be using it. Okay, right, moving on to the next little bit. For your GPS, right, if you remember, we set the GPS up on RX1 and TX1, which is UARC1, speaks for itself. You come down here to sensor input and select GPS. Now, this little drop down box next to it with the numbers in, you have to make sure you are using the correct number for that particular GPS. Now it will give you that information with the GPS itself, if not, uh, I'd contact the manufacturer and say why haven't you told me. But with this Maytech one, right, it's uh, 9600. Okay, and that's all you have to do there. You don't have to do anything else to get your GPS working. Now to get your smart audio working, if you remember I put that on RX5 which relates to UARC5 and you come down to your uh, peripherals, I think I spelt, I think I said that right, and you'll want to select TBS Smart Audio. And it's a case of save and reboot but I've already done it so I don't have to do that. Right, uh, moving on. Uh, I'm lost here. Oh, that's why. Just turn on me uh, expert mode. Moving on to your fail safes. Now, when you've got your GPS set up, the very first time you check your quad out for a flight, do not have it set on GPS. Right? Have it set on drop in your fail safes because if you've got a problem, it'll drop out the sky and you, you know, you've got an issue. However. Right, more than likely you've had your test flight and it's fine, so you come back to this page here and you want to select GPS Rescue. Now, don't get confused right, with GPS Rescue and uh, Return to Home, right, because it's two completely different things. It's not like a DJI quad that uh, basically returns to home and lands 10 foot in front of you. Right, GPS Rescue through Beta Flight. Your quad will turn round, right? It'll come fly back towards you, but it'll fly back towards you on a dive, right? And it'll basically keep going until it hits the ground and crashes, right? That's what the rescue is. However, you set it for the angle it's to dive down and the speed it's traveling. So the, the main idea is if you have a fail safe, right? Your quad will turn around, start coming back towards you, and if you've lost signal but before it hits the deck, all right, you will be able to uh, recover it, all right, and take control again. Or if you have VTX loss, right, for some strange reason you you've lost your VTX, you can't see a bloody thing out of your goggles, right? You can assign a switch, like a well, it is a, it's a rescue switch. I keep wanting to say return to home because in a figure 
figuratively speaking that's what it is but hit your rescue switch on your transmitter your quad will turn around start coming back towards you and uh, hopefully you'll get your fpv signal back again that's what rescue mode is right now there's some settings you need to change right these are my particular settings right it's the angular degree that the quad's going to come back at yeah the speed it's going to come back the ground speed the this that you know what I mean? these are my i'll show you man and it's up to you whether you want to use them you can mess about with them you can do whatever you want the satellites the minimum satellites have changed to six it was eight but uh, this is a really good GPS system, so I expect to get the minimum of 10 every single flight anyway. Right, but yeah, there, there you go. I'll let you have a quick look. They're my settings, right? It's completely up to you whether or not you want to use them. But like I say, on your very first flight, have it set on drop, right? And don't forget, like this being a new build, I'm just reset that to drop, right? So I know if I'm just double checking, yeah, it's on drop, so. If I have a problem with my first flight, I know it'll drop out the sky and the rescue will not work, basically. But I'll be changing that after the first flight. Now, you will want to set it up on a switch. Now, you come down here and just like setting up your beepers or anything else, you've got GPS rescue. You add your range, select your switch and you're off. That's just straightforward i haven't got my transmitter turned on at the moment so i can't set that up now moving on to the on-screen display for your gps right you will want gps sats which is basically telling you how many satellites little picture here how many satellites your gps is picking up all right so if you're flying a long way and you see that drop to I don't know seven or eight and you've got it set on six it's time to turn around and come back all right go a little bit lower down home direction home distance your home direction is an arrow which will point basically towards your home direction so you know which way if you're flying in the middle of some woods or something like that you always know your home direction assuming you've calibrated your gps correctly your home distance is in meters that speaks for itself all right you can change these if i remember to uh, feet and inches or feet and miles or something i can't remember off the top of my head play about with it have a look yourself all right and uh, i believe that's all you really need right you don't need your latitude and longitude unless you're going to be traveling miles right it does have a speed function a gps speed if i can find it uh, i don't know where it is actually it's on here somewhere there it is just above the sats gps speed and that will tell you in kilometers if i just turn it on for a second that will tell you in kilometers how fast your quad's going it's it's a gimmicky thing some people will want it some people won't want it me personally i'm not interested in that right moving on to the command line because there's a very important thing you need to do all right if you remember your flight control board was upside down right even though you've corrected that by changing the pitch to 180 degrees your, v your ESCs I should say are still mixed up right ESC1 is going to ESC4 and vice versa on there uh, ESC 1 is going to 3 and 2 is going to 4. In other words, they're all mixed up all over the place they are. All right, so what you need to do is change the resources. Now, let me explain that first of all by just uh, typing in uh, in the co command line dump. D-U-M-P, dump. And you get loads of information. Right, but we're going to scroll up to the top because I've already done this. All right, on your motor line here, if you see motor one, it says A03, motor two, A02, and so on. Right, now the first four is your first four motors, obviously. Right, these 
these were different i've already changed mine i shouldn't have done i should have showed you how to do it but then i remembered i've already done that change on another video with the uh, remix style quad right so i will leave a link in the description to how to do this because it's very important you go into your resources and change your motors around okay and there's plenty of information on how to do that in the video i'll leave uh, the link to in the description one thing i'll say about that at the end i was having trouble because i forgot to type the word save and click enter it's quite funny at the end you might enjoy it but no you must do this you must change your motors round. okay but like i said all right i'll leave a link to the remix right and it gives you all the information in there now i believe that is everything pilots and ground crew i can't think of anything else right that uh, needs cover i believe that is everything if there's anything i have left out please leave a comment and i'll be happy to go over it for you if you're a new pilot and you and there's just something i haven't covered because i didn't cover the entire installation of beta flight and everything right because this was more about questions i've been asked how to do smart audio how to set up gps and things like that all right but uh, i wanted to try and cover as much as i possibly could so uh yeah all there is now it's time for a maiden right but that will not be now because this video has gone on for way too long plus uh, the weather's not great so uh I don't know when the maiden will be but hopefully uh, in just a day or two or a few days at the most Okay then, pilots and ground crew, uh, hope you found these uh, few videos interesting, and uh, thanks for watching, and cheers.